this episode we'll be trying salad barbecue. Yours? First broiled and then put in a very with a bunch of spices and grilled. It's absolutely delicious. Tasting famous scening dishes on Moja Street. That that bean jelly really soaks up the flavor of the chili there. Visiting the largest mosque in Qinghai province, the Dongguan Mosque. There are actually 30 smaller mosques throughout all of Xining. Tugging into Tibetan yak meat pies. Exploring the night market. Watching the two people perform in Huju County. So this is actually a two wedding that we're experiencing here. Trying out different kinds of Baijiu liquor <laughs> and drinking Baijiu on the train back to Lanzhou. Ghosts in China. Ghosts in China. Cheers. All right, so we've made some uh, Hui friends from Gansu province and we're now on the way to uh, Sining in Qinghai, a new province. I can't wait, should be good. We're on the train now. I was having a very interesting conversation with those two ladies. That was pretty funny. Yeah, it was. You see, what they were asking was, um, one, I said I was an American, well, she may go in. And then um, he goes, oh, wait, you're not black. I thought only black people were in America. Then the other one's going, oh, no, 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 no. It's white people. Black people are in Africa. And I go, well, actually, no. <sighs> we have both in America. We have some black people, some white people, some Asians. We really have a little bit of everything. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <笑>哎呀我说话他就是我说我咱们中国的普通话嘛哎呀你说的也不是普通话呀我说的是我说的是我说的是我说的是我说的是我说的是我说的是我说的是我说的是我说的是我说的是我说的是我说的是我说的是
It's absolutely delicious. We just met a guy who's uh, of the Salah ethnic minority. However, um, it's against his tra tradition. He did not want to be interviewed. It's against his religion. Uh, the Salas uh, are an ethnic minority uh, and they have um, 800 years of history here in Qinghai and um, basically they originally originate from the country that is now known as Turkmenistan. Yeah, they have a very interesting history and it's a real shame we didn't get to interview them on camera. We'll be sharing the information with you very soon. However, we have just been given advice that we can go to a location that's 100 kilometers away from Sining City where the Salah live, the Salah people that is. Um, maybe we won't have time to do that because we are going to be doing Qinghai Lake on this trip, most probably. But um, let's see anyway, I mean, it's great to be here. We've only just arrived and we're meeting ethnic minorities, minorities from all over the place. Uh, it's great. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, even more diverse than Manjo, I think. I'd say so too, that was, that was predominantly Han. And there are a few Huey neighborhoods, but um, this is this is completely out of the box for us. Yeah, it almost feels like we're not in China anymore. I'm uh, fairly happy with um, our first hotel in Sining. It's pretty decent for just a hundred RMB a night. You can't get much cheaper than this, and it had great um, ratings on um, C Trip. Um, the front desk receptionist um, just used a needle and. Basically, um, got a, a splinter out of my uh, hand, and I didn't want to leave that in there because um, today at the Matisse grasslands, uh, we're walking through yak shit and sheep shit, and uh, just nasty and uh, not really worth the risk. And it's nice of her uh, that she did that. And uh, over here, we've got um, all these free green tea bags in the room, so um, drinking plenty of that, trying to detox over the next few days before we start drinking again and um, just uh, doing some hand washing I guess how's it going Eric? it's going pretty good here is the bathroom uh, the great thing about this hotel is that, like for 100 RMB a night you get two tissue rolls which you don't usually get in um, Hotels in China, um, big uh, clean bathroom, proper sh um, shower curtain which you never usually get either. As I say, free tea bags and a uh, place to dry your clothes. So um, yeah, it's a it's a great little hotel for a hundred RMB a night if you're in the area. And as I say, it doesn't really get much cheaper than this. Beijing is like 400 RMB for a shitty hotel and even in um, the south of China in Guangdong in Guizhou you probably pay at least 150 a night for something like this to 200 a night Xining is the capital of Qinghai province it has over 2 million inhabitants and is around 7,372 kilometers squared Xining is home to many ethnic groups, including the Han, Hui, Sala, Uyghur, Mongol, and Tibetan people. Alright, well, we're here on the Mojia Street in Xining. This is actually known as one of the best food streets, if not the best, in Xining, so uh, can't wait to try that. Um, and I hope that the food's different to Lanzhou. I mean, the food in Lanzhou is great. I just, I would like to try some new stuff. Yes, we're going to meet with a local shopkeeper named Zhong Chao. And he's going to show us some of the local teas, the baijiu, and some yak meat. So I can't wait. That's right, yeah. Let's give it a hit. And also, we're going to try some of the local food in one of the restaurants here. As we see here, they're very big on their yak meat. They even like the dried version, like yak jerky. And we have a lot of different flavors here. We have hot and sesame flavor. Ooh, we have curry flavor. That one looks pretty good. Looks like a five spice flavor. And yeah, a lot of different flavors. I think the owner's kind of happy. I mean, we're doing that, some advertising for that him. That guy's filming us right now. It's Hello. Cool. Ni hao. 
Hello. <laughs> Yeah, so Callum was just asking that man over there what kind of food, what kind of ethnic minorities eat this food, and he was saying all of them do. It's it's halal, so the Muslims can eat it, the Tibetans can eat it, everybody can eat it, and yeah, it's just very inclusive. A lot of different teas over here. So we're very big, we're very big into the tea culture and meat eating culture in this specific part of China. We even have some milk teas, it looks like. I've noticed that in this particular part of China, milk tea seems to be very popular. I've noticed that in other parts of China, they just drink the tea plain. But here... They here. like it sweet too, yellow sugar. Yeah, I know. It, it, it's actually very unusual for China because I'm used to the Hangzhou green tea, the Guangdong um, tea culture. And maybe occasionally they'll have milk teas, but it's usually a Vietnamese or Western version. So that man was just saying that we, we really like the rice wine, me and Callum, from our trip to Guizhou. But unfortunately, he doesn't have rice wine. What he does have is this type of baijiu, which is the Chinese alcohol. It's red. And he's saying that this flavor is a little bit sweet, and he's going to give us a little taste right now. Yeah, we really aren't into the whole baijiu drinking culture. That mijo in Guizhou, that was a, tr a rare treat, but that doesn't seem to be a, f a nationwide thing. I mean, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately no. it's, uh, uh, it's a shitty baijiu, which usually just tastes the same, whether it's expensive or cheap. Well, let's see if this is any different. All right, down the hatch. You know, it's not bad. It's still baijiu, but it's okay. Well, I'm here with the Kuka Silijo. And uh, it's the kind of badge I was just talking about, and let's give it a try. Alright, looking forward to this. It's kind of like Baijiu, not as spicy as Baijiu. I prefer it to Baijiu if I'm honest, but it's not something I'd go out my way to, to buy. So we're here on the Mao Jia and we're going to try the Mao Zhong Yang Pi. Yes, it's apparently a very famous dish here in Xining. It's made of baking soda and flour and uh, it should be great. Uh, I'm not a big fan of cold foods, um, unless it's salad, but um, Chinese cold foods I'm not a big fan of actually, but we'll, we'll yeah. see how it is. We call it Yang Cai in Chinese. It's a whole different type of cold food. That's right. Not sure what that is, maybe some tofu or something. Huh. It's okay. Hmm. I'll try this. Yeah, it's okay. The right, it's kind of spicy and cold. And like you, Callum, I'm not the biggest fan of uh, Liang Tsai either, so. Yeah, cold dishes. Yeah, cold dishes, so, you know, I think it's good for a cold dish. So, it's pretty communal eating here in Sining. A lot of people are sat at tables with people they don't know. Oh, that's the same thing all over China too, but maybe because of the Muslim culture here, it's more of a thing. Uh, I'd say it's more to an extreme here, actually. To even be honest, in, yeah. Even in Beijing. Even know. in yesterday, I mean, people were just coming over to our table, wanting to eat with us, wanting to sit with us. And um Nima Sh Nali the Yah. Shamo? Nima Sh Ching Hai Rama. Nima Sh uh Shama Xiao Minzu. Tangru Ran oh more, more extrovert than the people in Lanjo. They they just didn't really want to know foreigners. It's like I did, in in Lanjo it wasn't like a, a hostile thing. They weren't unfriendly. They just weren't that friendly either. It's kind of like being a ghost. To be honest, yeah. Okay, so we have another local delicacy of Sining here. This is Liangfen, which is uh, made from bean jelly, and it's made from pea powder. And it also has mashed garlic, chili, and mustard. So she she was just saying that this is hot. A hot dish. Oh, this is you man. Red the two two trays of the red tartar. Two trays, two trays. Two trays. Oh, okay. So they also have this dish cold, but um, I'm glad personally that it's hot because I prefer that. Let's see how it is. 
Yeah, that, that bean jelly really soaks up the flavor of the chili there. It's kind of like tofu in a way, it really just absorbs the flavors. We're going to try a local delicacy called swan dye or yogurt in English. And this is actually a very famous type of yogurt in this specific city. As you can see here, you can put anything you want on it. Dried fruits, nuts, looks like some candies here. This should be a very pleasant experience, I'm excited. I like yogurt. It's only 5 RMB, now that's pretty cheap. Um, basically, um, I wanted to get one of the better ones with like nuts in it, kiwi, mango, but they're, they're 15 RMB, which is still dirt cheap, but uh, for me as a student and all, it's like, mm, maybe not today. All right, let's give this yogurt a try. Ah, mm. That's good, it's very rich and full of flavor. To be honest, Callum, I don't think you need the other stuff in it. This is, this is good by itself. So, this guy was just telling us that this is a real pig's head. At first we thought it was fake, but no, it is real. That is blood coming out there. That is real teeth. Ooh. Um, me, me chur jigama? Huh? Jiga chur jigama? Chur. Chur. This is what you eat. You eat it. Okay, so they even eat the eyes. Huh? Yeah, so they eat everything. They do not waste here. Right there. Well, I'm guessing none of the ways will be having that shit. Well, I guess not. No. This little piggy did not go to market. Yeah, so that was a very interesting experience. Yeah, so uh, as you can see, like, that girl basically just approaches on the street. I was about to film a time lapse video, and she just said, Oh, do you want to join me to go to Tibet? Yeah, I mean, hey, like in China, random things can happen to you. It could either be kind things like that, sometimes it can even be some bad things. It's just a very random country, and that's why I love China. Yeah, so a mixture of experiences and feelings. And, uh, I mean, she doesn't know us, she doesn't know us from Adam, Tom, Dick, or Harry, and she just came up to us on the street and said, Hey, do you want to go to uh, Tibet with me? I'm going tonight. I've booked my ticket, I'm going tonight. Well, she doesn't know anything about us, yet she somehow wants to uh, know us and wants to take us to Tibet. That's an interesting experience all the same. Yeah, unfortunately we cannot go to Tibet at this present time. No. Nope, That's uh, a very difficult process for us. So maybe we'll leave that till next time. Yeah, another day. Hello. Hello. Ni hao, I'm Tibet Niro. Okay. As you can see as well, Chinese people are just genuinely very curious. They really do like to gawk at the camera a lot and say hi, hello. Uh -huh. Hello, we're here in Xining at Dongguan Mosque. And we were, I was just having a conversation with an older Hui gentleman just a few minutes ago, and he told me that this is the largest mosque in all of Xining. There are actually 30 smaller mosques <coughs> throughout all of Xining, but this is the biggest. And unlike the Xiguan Mosque in Lanzhou, women are actually allowed to come in here, and it's also more tourist friendly. We see a lot more women, in here and it's also much more open. The Dongguan Grand Mosque was originally built in 1380 and has a beautiful combination of Chinese and Arabic architecture. Here we are in a Tibetan restaurant. It's my first time to one in seven years, actually. And I think it's my first time ever, really. Yeah, and today we've got um, yak meat pastries and this wonderful tea. Yes. Uh, she said it's called Ching Cha. I'm not really sure what kind of tea it is, but it's actually very good. It looks similar to red tea. We haven't tried the yak meat pastries yet, but those look very good. Mm. 
cooked good. The crust is very crispy and crunchy, and inside the meat is very savory. It looks like it's just meat, but I don't think there are any onions or anything, which is good. It has a more holistic flavor that way. Mmm. Absolutely delicious. Mmm. That's cracking. Proper food. They're not shy of the portions, the Tibetans they aren't. I'm here in a scenic city and um, it's great, it's very culturally diverse and um, this is my friend here, what's your name? My name is Amir Khan. Amir Khan and he's from, where are you from? Pakistan. Pakistan and he, and he, and he works here in Sinning in the night market, now that's pretty cool. So there's not just uh, Chinese people who work here, there's also foreigners who work here. So uh, it's nice to have a diverse place and how is life in Sinning? Really? Uh, do you like it here? Uh, so. Okay. Can you Yeah. Of course you have. Uh -huh. Okay. You like cricket? Uh, cricket? Um, I'm not very good at it, but no. 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 Uh, anyway, have a nice day. Okay. See you. Our Pakistani friend, uh, he said he doesn't like it here at all. Yeah, I don't blame him. I mean, Xining is a great place to visit, don't get me wrong. But I would not want to live in Xining. It's not like the coastal cities where you can actually do stuff aside from the cultural stuff. Here, it's mostly just the cultural stuff, but no nightlife. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's it. If you want culture, if you want diversity in terms of culture, uh, it's stuff in historical. It's a great place to come to, but if you're looking for some fun, if you're looking for nightlife, um, not yep. the place for you. Don't come, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Just come if you're interested in China. <laughs> yeah. As I say, great place for a short-term trip. Not a very functional place for living. No. I think it would be hard for dating here. Um, and um, I don't know. I just, it doesn't have as many conveniences as like the other Chinese cities either. That's true. I mean, you have, uh, I've never seen like pharmacies with easy access. I haven't seen that many hospitals, not even that many schools. In the rest of China, all of that stuff is in just one place in your neighborhood. It's very convenient, but not here. That's right. I just bought this Qinghai beer, which is a local beer to Qinghai province. I haven't had this beer before, so I'm looking forward to trying it to see if it's any different from any of the other beers in China. Let's see. There we go. Okay. Hmm. Tastes a little bit stronger than some of the other beers, at least the beer in Lanzhou. But it's still pretty similar to most Chinese beer. Very consistent. So here we are in the county of the two people. That's uh, Huju County, that is. And uh, as you can see behind us, we've got little statues of the two people. And uh, I'm hoping we can see some people like this uh, in the, the actual clothing, and that would be awesome. Yeah, it's not much of a village. It's actually more of a town. Although, as you said, it is called a county, so I guess that makes sense. Well, anyway, we can hear some music coming from this way. And we've been told by our friends on the bus that this is the best bit of the town, so that's where we're going to go. And uh, I guess I'll be following my ears and go in that direction. Alright. Alright, so we're going to try some free alcohol. Just a bite, Joma. Sing how they are. Let's go, Gil. Mm. Mm. It's the tradition here to, to drink free of uh, these uh, cups of baijiu. Oh, that shit is horrible. Ugh. Nasty. Ugh. We're going to see a live performance. It was kind of steep, about uh, 90 RMB per person, but to get here to, for the ticket, but I think it might be worth it. We'll see, we'll see. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Who are you? The two people are another one of China's officially recognized ethnic groups. Their language has been heavily influenced by Chinese and Tibetan 
they are the descendants of the Mongol troops during the Mongol conquests. Kuju is also known as the Two Autonomous Region in Qinghai. It is located in the city of Haidong, which is the second largest city in Qinghai. Kuju is where all of the Tus perform their traditional rituals and customs. A two wedding that we're experiencing here. This is this is what? So what do you think of the two weddings? Um, they look very interesting. They like to throw um, baijiu at each other, and yeah, it's different from any wedding I've seen. Let's put it that way. This gentleman here, who's a two, he showed us around and given us a bit of information on the people. Yeah. So uh, thanks for that. Yeah. Uh, we did want to go up the mountain today up there, but um, apparently you can only do that in winter. However, the experience here has been amazing. It's kind of been like Kylie in Guizhou on steroids. I mean, in t like the scenery was better in Kylie, but there are a lot more performances here. So I'm I'm happy about that. Yeah, the people are much more into the preservation here. I think that's right. Um, it was wasn't cheap to come in here. It was 90 RMB per person, but my God, it was worth it. I mean, it's been a it's been a great experience seeing all the different dances and stuff. And um, so, if you're ever in the two village, don't be put off by the price. I'd say come and see it. Yeah, mind blowing experience. All right, well, we're about to try some of the local baijiu here in the two community. And we'll see if it's any better than the regular Baijiu, but um, you see, I'm not a Baijiu fan personally. I don't think you are either, Cal. Nope. So. Well, much of a muchness. Ooh, this uh, this will be an interesting experience. We'll see. Come on, come Smells like a mecca of Baijiu. It does. Oh. An interesting smell. It almost smells like heat. You know what? This smell actually would make would entice people to drink baijiu who'd never tried it before. But they wouldn't know what they were getting themselves into, would they? <laughs> well, some people actually do like baijiu. It's just a few. <laughs> All right. Well, we have a treasure trove of a lot of different types of baijiu here. I mean, it's really quite impressive. Apparently, the baijiu here is much better than the baijiu we tried at the gate earlier. And here, it looks like we have a shrine. I'm not quite sure to who, but it must be Baijiu related somehow, I'd imagine. Everything here is Baijiu, Baijiu, Baijiu. about to try some of the local baijiu here. Apparently this is the... Uh, so this is the highest percentage they have. Bottoms up. <laughs> Two more. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay, that was not smooth. Well, okay. best be getting on with it then. <laughs> I have to drink three cups of this. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay. We can do this, Eric. Talking about it's not going to help. It is not. Just get on with it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> 
And here he is, he's doing the Baijiu oh, dance. Delicious. Uh, delicious, yeah. Delicious. delicious, that's right. Delicious. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Eric, give it a twirl if you want. I can do this, I'm a big boy. Okay. Oh god, it burns. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I just had my first cup of Baijiu and that shit tastes just like the shit you have in Beijing, the Ergo Toad. Might as well be the five quiet stuff, the nine quiet stuff, but no, it's the expensive stuff, but they're all the same, really. Anyway, oh, this woman loves me. She's giving me more of it, too. She really wants to take the piss out of me, doesn't she? Wants to see the family get drunk. Anyway, let's have a look. And that is Branson. Okay. Oh, okay, so she wants to do the other one. So here we go. My fourth cup now. <laughs> Not too nice for me. But for all you Baijiu enthusiasts out there, it's Baijiu Paradise, so welcome to enjoy. But um, as a little tribute to uh, this beautiful place, we thought we would give them a little bit of a dance just to finish it off with. Here you go. Alrighty, well we're here in a cheaper Baijiu place this time, very similar smell to the last one. And here we have a variety of Baijiu's, um, Baijiu is similar. Yang Okay, so apparently this is a goji flavored Baijiu. Interesting. It's so, for, health. It's for health as well. Yeah, for health. So supposedly, I, I don't know from my experience of drinking Baijiu, this is a little bit healthier for you. So yeah, if you're a Baijiu lover, maybe give this one a try. Uh, this, this is Okay, so this is apparently all two style Baijiu. The nicer looking the bottle is, the higher the cost and the higher the quality. So, this is This is Okay. So, this is 60 uh, per jin, which is, I guess, about a liter. And, yeah. Okay. Woman, can you chang this one? Uh, oh well, bottoms up, folks. You know, it's not that bad, actually. For Baijiu, it's okay. It still has, it still has that Baijiu taste, but it's much, much less, um, much less strong than the... <clears throat> We have a bit of a tour group here. I think the following us, these see the same tech tour group were, I think these people are following us. The same group was following us earlier on. Yes, yes, yes they are. I mean, in China, it's small town China, man. It's crazy. Anyway, what I meant to say is this Baijiu is not, not terrible by Baijiu standards. And, um, yeah, let's, let's give it a go. As you say, Eric, it's um, it's better than the last one. It's it's um, it's uh, less pungent. Uh, it's uh, 
it's easy to down and it doesn't have that same horrible nasty spicy flavor if you want to even say spicy because i like spicy food but it's just um, a horrid horrid taste it doesn't burn down the throat right yeah this one doesn't burn down the throat it doesn't stink yeah it's it's okay well i have a little bag of baijiu let's see what i bought well i got the medicinal one i thought it'd be a nice change from the regular types of baijiu and who knows, maybe it'll be more flavorful. I did like the fruit style baijiu we tried in Xining, so maybe this one will be better. And supposedly it's healthy for you, so hey, why not? Chinese medicine can never go wrong. All right, well, we're down in the cellar now. And unlike the top part where it was more of a grainy smell, this is definitely a baijiu smell, so this is where the magic happens. So it looks like, from what I can see, they, they go through a fermentation process. They bury the baijiu underground for a certain amount of time, and then when it's ready, they dig it up. So yeah, I mean, very interesting place. I didn't realize until seeing these distilleries that Baijiu is in fact the world's most consumed alcohol. Baijiu has a history of over 9,000 years. Baijiu is made by steaming sorghum, water and fermentation. In fact, Baijiu is buried anywhere from one month to 30 years. Well, we're back on the way to Lanjo. Just left Xining. Yep, we just left Xining. We got a bottle of Baijiu from new Chinese friends, and we're just going to see what happens. Yep, this is basically the uh, the Baijiu uh, we got um, yesterday. The medicinal one, and it's also the uh, berry flavored one. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Anyway, after this, I'll be going back to Beijing and then back to the border, and then Calum will be continuing his studies in Yenzhou. So, uh, yep. Uh, Unfortunately, this will be the end of our journey, but as people say, all good things must come to an end. Well, we've got our uh, Baijiu here, our um, Yangsheng healthy Baijiu. Let's see if it's any different from the normal stuff. All right. Cheers. Calum. Cheers. It's been a good trip. It's been a good trip. <laughs> It's, uh, it's definitely still Baijiu, I'll say that much. It's not that bad. But it, it has, has a berry too. Yeah, it has it's some more flavour than the usual stuff, the usual shit. But yeah. yeah. Let's see if anyone else is interested. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not awkward, we just need an extra pair of hands. Cheers! Okay. Hello. We have our feet in my Oh, okay. A little cramped in here. Okay. Hey, okay. cheers. Cheers. Cheers, guys. It's funny, you can never win in China. Either you get called out for not drinking enough, or you get called off for drinking in the afternoon. Yeah, I mean, I guess it depends where you are and at what time. But, uh, I mean, it's a crazy country, honestly. Yeah. What I like about China, as I've said before in previous vlogs, anything can happen. A lot of randomness. Oh. More so if you're a foreigner, I think. To be honest, I think it's more randomness for us because we're fish out of water. Just say we just stick out like sore thumbs. Especially us guys because we're a little bit weird anyway. 
We're kind of all like ghosts, huh? so there you go. Yeah, we're ghosts in China, man. And wow. All right. What are we, buddy? We're ghosts in China. We're ghosts in China. Cheers. Cheers. Stay tuned for the next episode where I'll be visiting the Gansu Provincial Museum and continuing the journey west to the desert oasis city of Dunhuang. I'll be exploring the history of the Mogao Caves, riding through the Gobi Desert on camelback and visiting the Crescent Lake and Mingsha Shan.